Immersion, counter flow or plate chiller? Which is best? We're about to find out. Starting off with the immersion chiller. Very, very basic technology, something that pretty much every home brewer starts off with. This dunks into the hot liquid. You've got cold water passing in through one side, which gets hot as it goes through. Hot water passes out as the exhaust on the other side, and the rest of your beer cools down. That is all there is to it. Counterflow. Ooh, that's heavier than I thought. This one is kind of similar to the immersion chiller, but with a little few more working parts. So there's basically a chiller coil inside this coil, which is where the wort is gonna pass through. So the wort will go on one end, come out the other end. And then around that is another additional metal tube, which you have water passing in the opposite direction to the inflow of the wort. So if the wort's coming in through here and coming out here, then the cold water flows in through here and hot water flows out through here, thereby counter flow chilling your wort and cooling it down. Lastly, the plate chiller. Works with a pretty similar concept to the counter flow. You'd set this up as a counter flow. The only difference is this thing is just much more compact. So inside this are many, many, in this case, copper plates that are basically creating a lot of surface area for cold water to pass in through and then pass out the other end, hot wort passing in through here, cold wort passing out the other end. And there's just a lot of surface area for that cold water to hot wort interaction to cool down your beer. Now, our experiment. It's gonna be pretty basic, but pretty effective. We're gonna heat up in one brewing vessel 45 liters of water, which is about 12 gallons. We're gonna heat that up to 80 degrees Celsius because we're not brewing any beer today, but it's better that way because we can be consistent. We're then gonna hook up each of these different cooling devices one at a time, and we're gonna give it 10 minutes to run. At the end of 10 minutes, we see what the temperature is on the water coldest water is the winning chiller. That's pretty much it. We don't need to go from boiling all the way down to pitching temperature. All we need is to see which one cools down the fastest and that's gonna be our champion chiller of the day. Jump transition. First one off the ranks is the immersion chiller. So as soon as we dunk this in, it starts cooling everything. So we start our clocks straight away, 10 minutes and counting down. Now, uh, to give you some context around how we're running this experiment, one of the other things to consider is flow rate. So for this, we're keeping the flow rate exactly the same between all three, at least exactly the same to the extent that we can control things. The amount of water coming into the inlet and out of the exhaust is the same pressure for all three using the same tubing. Whether or not they can conduct the same flow rate based on their diameter inside their internal systems is a different matter altogether, but that's not something in our control. Any case, We've got nine and a half minutes to go. I guess I should do a quick pros and cons on the immersion chiller while we're here. So big pro is cheap. Really cheap to get these things, really easy to use them. They're the most user friendly out of all the coils we have here, out of all the, uh, the chilling options we have here, I should say. Huge con though, is that the entire thing goes into the word, which is not necessarily ideal considering you're trying to keep a pretty sanitary environment right after doing all that hard work brewing. So theoretically, yeah, you put it in when it's at 100 degrees, it should still be a pretty sterile environment. If there is anything on it, it might get boiled off. But if you are cautious about sanitation conditions, trying to make perfect beer, it's not the best thing to use for that exact thing. However, it doesn't have any issues with, um, with blockages because you're not running any word for word through the piping. It means you're not gonna get any blockages with the cooling process. That's pretty much the highlights on pros and cons. We'll talk about more in the discussion, but for now, we've got eight and a half minutes left. So we'll come back to take a, um, a reading of our temperature at the end of that. All right, time's up. That is 10 minutes and oh shit, no, I need to take it out. <laughs> like, trying to turn off the, the pump from working. <laughs> All right, let's put that to the side. All right, and we'll do a quick swish with the mash paddle. I'm not brewing, but I'm giving this a mix and I'm gonna do the same for all three of these different chillers because we want equal distribution of temperature throughout this, um, this water. I'll give it 10 seconds to settle. Want, want all the, uh, the heat to evenly distribute out throughout all the liquid. I can't speak English, bloody hell, sorry guys. Before we take a reading, so that we're actually getting an accurate reading from this, and that's 10 seconds, let's go. Now, we're not gonna show you these results, but you can see them at the end of the experiment, and then we'll have a bit of a discussion about which is fastest, which is most efficient, and which is best. We'll come back to you with all of that very soon.
Now it's time for the counterflow chiller. So we're gonna rig this up so that the hot water is gonna go in through the bottom. The colder wort is gonna come out through the top because we've done the opposite way around with our plumbing. Let's connect this up. Now give me, it doesn't actually matter how that sits because it's just actually a test of the whole thing anyway. I'm just gonna leave that in there. I wouldn't do that on a brew day, but I'm gonna do that now. Okay, now heat is gonna go off and we are gonna start pumping. Oh, clocks, We've gotta start our clocks. And go, all right, 10 minutes and counting down. Now the, I guess let's, this is a good time to talk about pros and cons with the counter flow. Huge pro is that it's a more, it's more easy to keep a sanitary environment inside here than it is to keep a sanitary environment with this entire immersion chiller, for example. The immersion chiller, you need to make sure every single surface is spotless if you don't wanna risk any contamination going into the beer that you've just finished brewing. Whereas with something like this, you can run like a caustic solution through it at high temperature, then you can run some acid through it to clean it out. So it's quite easy to keep this thing clean and sanitary on the inside. Con cost honestly in comparison to the immersion chiller it is a little more expensive the other con is um i mean i guess it just requires a little bit of setup to be honest you just need to get some bits and bobs to make all the plumbing work the way you want this one is a touch more user friendly but it's not hard to use it just requires wrapping your head around plumbing things into opposite directions that's about it and the big pro in comparison from this to the plate chiller is that there's just so much more space for debris to pass through because it's a whole long wide tube you're less likely to get blockages from like all the hopper or the gunk blocking up the flow of the uh of the wort passing through the tubing now let's wait for this to finish we've got about nine no eight and a half minutes left we'll come back to that at the end and see what temperature we're at five four three two one and stop all right, the pump is off. We are gonna give this thing a bit of a mix. Make sure that all of this is evenly distributed in terms of heat. All right, now let's lap. We'll wait for 10 seconds and we'll take a reading, but we're gonna hide this reading until the end of the video so we can do all the results together. That's 10 seconds, let's go. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> oh, and I am using the uh, thermometer instead of the temperature reading at the base of the Bruzilla because I just think the thermometer is going to be more accurate, frankly. The, well, the Bruzilla only gives me in terms of one degree at a time. If there's actually such a hairline difference that we need the decimal places, we need the, uh, the thermometer for that. All right, we're gonna get this reading, then we'll see you for the counter, no, for the plate chiller. Now it is time to try the plate chiller. So once again, we've set it up basically the same way as the uh, counter flow. We've got the hot water coming out into here, coming out there, cold water going in here, warm water coming out there. Let's get this thing started and see what we end up with. Is there any way for me to put this where, no, you know what, it's just gonna be like that. Let's start her up, ooh, and timer. All right, and go. We're good. All right, we're gonna let this thing fly. Um, actually, I guess while this is started up, we should talk about pros and cons with the plate chiller. So, big pro, similar to the um, counter flow, is sanitary reasons. It's really easy, once again, to run caustics or to run like a lot of acids and stuff through this thing and clean the absolute crap out of it. So it's really easy to make this thing sterile and much cleaner. Con cost this is the most expensive of the three different versions i mean you can get i don't know immersion uh, sorry counter flows and plate chillers fairly comparable you can probably get them for around a similar cost big big pro this thing is really uh effective on space it is significantly smaller than either of the other two units so you can tuck it away you could even like have it as like drilled into like your under bench or something and it just never moves it stays there permanently the only major Small con first is you do lose a little bit of wort on a brew day because you get a little bit that stays in here that doesn't come back out through the pump. 
uh, so you lose like a little bit of beer, but the big con is the space inside this thing. So unlike the counter flow, it does not have anywhere near the same diameter for the liquid to flow through. So you can on occasion have issues with blockages, particularly if you're running a really hop heavy beer. Like if you're doing a huge neeper and you don't have any kind of filtering to stop all that stuff from getting through your pump, you can get um, some blocked issues inside the counter flow, which are a bit of a pain to fix. Again, you gotta run the caustics and stuff, but if you're in the middle of trying to cool your beer down on a brew day, that's frustrating, that has happened to me. But that's basically the only major con. Outside of that, pretty good stuff. Now, we're gonna let this thing run. We've got about eight and a half minutes left to go, more or less. At the end of that, we'll come back, take a reading once again, and then we'll get onto the results. Now, we got eight, seven, six, sorry, I stopped at the counter down. Four, three, two, one. Boom, off. All right, let's again give this thing a quick mix. All right, let it ride for another 10 seconds and we'll start taking a reading. Now, after I do this, you will see us for the results. The results are in. So, how, what, what order should we do this in? From uh, third to first? Yeah, okay. From third to first, in worst place and first loser, we have the Counterflow Chiller. So in 10 minutes, it took 80 degrees Celsius, 45 liters of water, 12 gallons, down to 56.8, yeah, 56.8 degrees Celsius on the thermometer and 57 degrees Celsius according to the bottom of the Bruzilla. So basically 57 degrees. Coming in second place, which did actually surprise me, was the plate chiller. So the plate chiller cooled that same volume of water from 80 degrees Celsius down to 49.4 degrees, according to the thermometer, and 50, 50 degrees, according to the boiler. Now coming in rocketing ahead in first was actually the immersion chiller. So the immersion chiller cooled that same volume and temperature down to 44.3 degrees Celsius on the thermometer and 45 degrees Celsius on the boiler. So essentially, this was at 57, this was at 50, and this was at a whopping 45. So 12 degree difference between the counterflow and the immersion. Now, to be fair, we've got to clarify a few things with this experiment. Just looking at the number of coils on this versus this, you can see a pretty clear cut difference. There is way more surface contact with the liquid with this one than there is with this. There's just more coils, which means you're just gonna have way more cooling power. Now, which one is best? Personally for me, I'm still gonna to prefer to use the plate chiller despite the fact that it cooled five degrees colder in the same time frame. The plate chiller is more sanitary, at least in my opinion. I know that I can absolutely clean the bejesus out of this thing with a heap of chemicals and stuff all throughout that inside. And then I don't have to worry about the outside of the actual unit itself. Whereas this one here is significantly harder to clean. You can have like little bits of grime and stuff on every nook and cranny of this thing. So if you do care about your sanitation, it's a little bit of a trickier device to use. That being said, it is by far the cheapest and the most accessible and the most user friendly. So there's horses for courses. Um, the other thing I do wanna discuss that we couldn't test because we we're including this one in the experiment was a single pass chilling. What I mean by that is when the liquid or the wort or the hot water in this case starts flowing through the chiller, as soon as that first flow starts coming out of the chiller, what is the temperature there? Can't do it because this one, nothing passes through the chiller itself. But in comparison to these two, we did it off camera. This one, basically you can do a single pass down to yeast pitching temperature or pretty close to it. This one struggles a little bit more. Again, nowhere near as much um, surface area as the plate chiller. So you wouldn't really be able to do a single pass using this particular Colossus unit. If you had a, a coil chiller with way more surface area, might be a very different story. But the other advantage between these two besides sanitation in comparison to this, is that you can control your flow rate of your wort through either of these chilling systems. So you can actually get some more cooling, knock down power to do a single pass and go straight into the fermenter. Does size matter? The age old question that every man has asked or been asked. No, it doesn't to all the missuses out there. But yes, in this case, it does. So there is obviously 
different sizes of surface area between these different vessels, that's why things can cool down faster or slower. The more contact area you have between that cold surface and the wort is going to be in more cooling power. So this is not really a fair experiment because we could get a counterflow chiller with way more coils and then it's going to have more knockdown power. So yes, size does matter. Get one that's appropriate to the size of batches that you're making on your brewing vessel. That is about all I have to say for today. Very interesting results. I'm going to do a write-up of this and have it ready on our website, theflyingwombat.com.au, if you want to read all of this on text. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I would love to hear your thoughts on any of this and if you've done a similar experiment. Until next time, brew on. Catch you next time. Why is it wet there? No, oh, it's from the chillers. Ready? Now my hand's wet. Ready? Yeah. Immersion. That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs>